Okay, I'm going to replace the um, front engine mount in this Honda Prelude and I'll do a couple of other things like the the gasket on the thermostat housing and of course it's as noisy as hell. Um, fortunately, rainy day job. Um, so basically we need to remove this this front bit of metal that sits on top of the radiator and the air intake, all those bits there, they're all pretty self-explanatory how they come out. And the front engine mount's actually down here, if the camera will focus, where those two connectors are, that green and, and white one. So it's actually under there, if I'm not mistaken, and that's it. Um, so what we're going to have to do to make it easy is actually remove the radiator. Now this one's an auto, so as well as the, the top and bottom radiator hoses here, we've also got a couple of lines to the um, gearbox to cool the gearbox. So if you've got a manual one, once you get this off, this radiator's pretty much loose and I think you should be able to just pull it out. If you've got an auto, um, you'd need to disconnect the... you should really empty this, of course. There's a little tap on the bottom of it. I haven't actually got around to doing it yet. I've got a, actually got a leak in another hose, so this is half empty anyway, I think, at the moment. So I had to limp home a bit. So I thought now's a good chance to get off my bum and actually do the... Um, pull the whole radiator out, replace the um, old coolant uh, replace there's a little cooling hose up under the distributor there that's actually leaking it's nearly broken in half I think I've just tied it off with a couple of cable ties to get me home so we'll change that as well um, thankfully I thought I was gonna have to get down underneath this to disconnect the um, remove that you'd have to remove the splash guard thing or the lower part of the bump or whatever it is to something under these and um, disconnect the hoses for the um, gearbox cooling but it turns out they come up here under this top radiator hose We've got, looks like there's one line there and one line there, that one's actually, I did replace that, those looks like it's actually pulled off a bit, so I better fix that as well. But it looks like it can actually, if I undo these two clamps, um, that should just come off and no, hopefully no, no um, lubricant will come out of the gearbox, no gearbox oil, automatic transmission fluid, whatever they call it. Um, so from the look of that, um, yeah, that's actually cable tied to that hose down there. To the bottom hose so if I lift everything up I'm not sure if I can oh, I can eat looks like I can disconnect this whole big hose because I might take it right out just so I can inspect it so there's a clamp just there so we'll take the clamp off that I think I'll pull this whole hose out this other hose out because I've got to take that off that's the thermostat housing there that's got a small leak on it and I've actually ordered a new gasket a new thermostat I thought I might as well just replace the lot um, though most of the stuff in the coolant in this car cooling system seems to be pretty clean and good condition um, besides obviously the dirt all over the outside of it, living up a dirt road like I do. So I'll see if I can disconnect these these two hoses, the two transmission hoses, but if you've got a manual you don't need to worry about that. And then I'm hoping this lifts out, there will be a connection somewhere for this fan as well, I assume the electric fan, or double, yeah I think they're both electric fans, so there must be a wiring harness for that. Uh, looks like we've got our, um, our overflow bottle hose here, that'll have to come off. And I think that's about it, but we'll soon find out. I'll get these hoses disconnected and I'll see if I can lift it out. Okay, I've removed, I actually pulled the whole top hose out because made access down to these two lines from the gearbox easier. I've just put, got a rag here because there's a little bit of transmission fluid dripping out. I've got those disconnected. I just realised that we've actually got a power steering line here. I assume that's what it is. Either that or air conditioning, but I think that's, oh no, that's the power steering pump there, I think. So that's an air conditioning line, uh, wraps right around this fan to make it really annoying because this end of the radio radiator doesn't want to lift up. So we've got at least one bracket down there, a couple of brackets here, or maybe just the one. Actually they're not part of it. So there's a bracket down there on the hose, and there's another one here obviously. I'm hoping that'll loosen it off and I can push it out of the way. But that seems to be holding this end of the radiator in. It moves a little bit, but I can see that hose pull it back. Um, the other end feels loose, so I've still just got to disconnect that, that bottom hose and see if I can find where the... I haven't spotted any wiring for these fans yet, so I'm not sure where... There's a wheel over there. And I'll have to find, once I get it loose a bit more, I can probably see where the wiring for the fan is. Okay, so after a lot of messing around, I've managed to get the radiator partly out. I've still got one connector to go. There's one connector right down in here, hidden under this um, aircon hose. 
in the worst position possible. Um, the connector is not the worst thing on earth. You've got to put this one of those ones. You've got to press the outer bit in. Outer plastic. Oh, it's actually not on this. It's on the other half. You've got to press a bit down to on the on the other half, and that releases a little latch on this. But then the, they put a little clip on it, so it's clipped onto the metalwork of the radiator on some little bracket. Yeah, I think that thing right there. So absolute pain to get to. Yeah, that's the green connector there. So you actually press on the little piece little piece hidden down on the back of it here and then at the same time you've got to try and press that down and pull the other connector out with one hand basically absolute pain yeah then they got they had a clip a little sh one of these stupid pressing chassis clip things so that was just about impossible to get out while, while I can only lift the radiator partly up and with this um, aircon hose trying to pull it back down and catching on it so I sort of end up just ripping this thing up um, I managed to get one connector off this other end. I actually removed the battery because I thought there was a connector on the other side of that, but they are on the radiator itself. There's a little connector here and a clip similar to the other one that you've got to press a bit on the, on the green half, wherever the other half has gone, and um, release it while pulling it out. Um, real pain, but now I'm stuck with this. I'm not sure what this other one, I think that was a fan connector, I think that here yeah, goes to one of the fans, on the other side it's the fan. Then we're down here we've got this temperature sensor I'd say. Um, and that's just because the wire is so tight now while I've lifted this up. So I've got really no hope, I don't know how you actually unclip it, so I'm still trying to work out how to unclip it. But with the radiator up like this, the wire is as tight as, so it won't let the connector come off anyway. But um, yeah, it's been a massive amount of exertion and back breaking sort of work to actually get this horrible thing to even this stage so they're pretty pretty much a pain in the bum these ones to do um, the Japanese usually make stuff easier to work on but because these are such a tight little car I'm um, getting this thing out has been a real pain but I'm nearly there so I'll persist and see if I can work out how to get this connector off I'm just having a rest because my back is sore from bending over and trying to pull it up and hold it while trying to get these horrible little connectors off. There's a whole lot of leaves and stuff down there, so it's probably a good thing I pulled this out. About time I gave it all a clean, because uh, this is hard up against the um, aircon grill here. The, uh, what is it, the condenser on the outside, I think, isn't it? Evaporator on the inside. But, um, yeah, so there's a bit of, bit of muck down in there that needs cleaning out. But, um, yeah, it's not much fun bending over and trying to lift this thing up while trying to get in there with one hand and get the connectors and using a torch and then every time you put your hand somewhere it blocks the light from the torch so you can't see a thing that you're doing but it looks like it is possible to get it out from the top now, there's no real access to those connectors from underneath I don't think I mean maybe if you put all the the, um, the plastic down underneath there and even the bumper off or something now you could even take this aircon thing off from the front I think and just pull it outwards it would probably make life a bit easier because the radiator only really comes straight up it's very tight fit in there but I'm also get this last connector off and get this mongrel of a thing out okay I finally got this last connector off the one at the bottom which I think is the temperature sensor it does actually the top bit of it does press down you press at the back of it and press down it was just really stiff so it wouldn't move probably got a bit of dirt or something in there I mean I can barely even see that in this one there it is and then you just yeah, press this top bit down which is jammed right up under the fan and pull it backwards and it does come off so it's not that bad but um, just yeah really hard even with it off now I can barely push that plastic down but it is just a push down one and it will come off okay so now I've got the, the radiator completely removed I'm um, putting a rag on these couple of lines into the gearbox is a good idea not just to get any oil that comes out there but to stop any radiator fluid getting in there because I hadn't actually emptied this one out um, so if you do take it off without emptying the radiator first, you don't want to get any of that in your gearbox. you also got to be careful that the gearbox oil doesn't get into your coolant. Then I've just given this a quick clean, cleaned out some dead insects and leaves and stuff and flicked them out under the car. But um, here's our engine mount. This thing right there. Um, so it's got a bolt going through, big 17mm bolt through to the other side here. You can see it coming out there. Um, I'm probably going to have to put a jack under this engine just to hold it up because this will probably could fall forward could fall backwards I don't know what it's going to do when I disconnect that and then there's 
I'm not sure how easy they're to get to. There's a one bolt there, one at the front. So they're, those are two are easy. There's another bolt here, is right underneath the. Um, I don't think that nut comes off that engine mount. And I don't know that it's easy to take. You probably could take the whole bracket off the engine, but I'll see if I reckon just with a spanner I can. Once I'll, if I can break the um, thing loose, then hopefully I can get to that bolt under there just with a spanner and do it with that. Otherwise, I may end up having a. There's one bolt there, two more up there, and hopefully this whole bracket comes off the engine, so it might, might end up being easier because I've got a breaker bar in there to, to remove this bracket and then take the engine mount out and then bolt the new engine mount in and put this bracket back on, which means I have to take those connectors off as well. But anyway, I'll have a look and see what I can do with that. So I've just got the jack under the gearbox here. Seems like the solidest thing I can easily get it under. It is lifting the whole car up when I lift it anyway. Um, you could sit under the sump or something, but probably not a good idea. Some cars, if you bend the sump, it actually blocks the oil pump, so I wouldn't recommend that, but I've just got it sitting under the gearbox on the aluminium body there, just lifting up ever so slightly. So it didn't seem to... The actual car body is going up with the engine anyway, and it didn't seem to flex the engine mount at all but at least that'll hold the engine where it is i've just got it slightly lifted so once i undo this we'll get an idea if the bolt doesn't want to come out it might be because the engine's actually too lifting up but um do you just want something to stop so the engine can't sort of fall downwards um and then the, the bolt holes won't line up so we'll keep it where it is and go from there okay i decided it's easy to remove the bracket from the top here this one over here um, just get it out of the way and now we can see the old engine mount uh, the bolt came out with no problem the old rubber bit is yeah well it's pretty well torn off I think now I can pull that right out the central bit that's where the bolt went through so the rubber is well and truly ripped out on that one so now I can get easy access to the bolts I'll just get the breaker bar and then I'll use the old Makita drill with a uh, quarter inch driver whatever they are fitting to get them out the rest of the way and I'll go and get the new one and stick her in Okay, I've got the new one here. It's this Kill Pro brand. Came off eBay. MT9403. Um, that's the old one. You can see the guts are ripped right out of that. The bit with the bolt. That's usually how they tear. Uh, this one's obviously a lot better condition. Um, I do have, I think, some second hand ones. Second hand engine mounts that I pulled out of old cars, but I thought for $40 it cost me. Um, I'm not going to go to mess around and put a second air one in there and it might last a year or two and tear like this one did because the rubber's the same sort of age so I thought for $40 since it's so much hassle getting the radiator out and stuff I'll just get this brand new one and put that in and hopefully that's decent enough quality that I won't ever have to change that again so I'll get that fitted now put that back in and then yeah this other bracket back on and the bolt back through and then I can put the radiator back in and um, yeah, and then I'll need to re flush that out and refill that system well I've got another little hose in there I've got to change I'm going to do the thermostat housing so before I put all the the um, air intake stuff back in I'll get all that done as well okay when you got the new one fitted just leave the, the bracket here a bit loose um, and you can look through the hole there I actually had to jack the car up quite a bit until the body fell down enough because uh, this was um, sitting a bit high um, so I just jacked the gearbox right up uh, until the till the bracket came back up um, to the hole in the in the engine mount well, basically the body stayed a bit lower as the, the gearbox went upwards and I've got like I say a bit of loose looseness in that so I can jiggle that around because it's not perfectly lined up sideways either but um, now I can try and get the bolt in there oh, nice if the torch should stay somewhere useful but it won't that's so nearly there yeah I can start it's going in a little sideways you may have to tap this home with a hammer or something I kind of designed to tap in and they got like pointy ends on them uh, it looks quite a bit out at this end 
So I may even have to get a um, like a builder's wrecking bar or something and jam it down in there. Maybe even now. It's probably not small enough to go in there. Yeah, I'll almost get the, the breaker bar in there. And may have to tweak, tweak things around a little bit, just bend things around until everything's lined up in there. And then you should be able to tap that bolt until it reaches the nut. And then just do it up as you expect. Um, but once I get that into the nut a bit, I'll do these other ones up and then tighten the, the engine mount one. Focus. And um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so I've got this builder's breaker bar in here. Just jammed between the engine and the engine mount there. And I just had to push this forward quite a bit and basically hold it in place, leaning on it while I, I bash the, or basically tap the bolt back through the hole and had to bang it a couple of times and try turning it and banging it and turning it while moving this thing around, moving the engine back and forth a little bit. And eventually I felt that it actually went tight by hand. So I've got the um, ratchet onto it and yet yeah, it had gone into the hole. So that's partly done up. I'll finish doing up this bracket. But like I say, you may have to, everything will be probably a little bit different. But once you get the height, you've then got to yeah, push this engine back and forwards a bit just to get everything lined up so that the bolt when it comes out the other side lines up with a hole there or the like a welded on nut and once you feel it starting to bite in that you can get the ratchet on and start doing it up and like I say then you can tighten the bracket and then finish tightening that bolt off and everything should be sitting in a nice position then okay this is all in and all tightened up just make sure you tighten everything up really well on both brackets or uh, well, the engine mount and then that bracket on the motor and obviously the bolt going through it um, if you're interested in your engine number uh, it's right here this is a B20A6 hopefully the camera will focus on that and I guess it's the engine number below it and I think that might be your timing hole there where the gearbox joins onto the Oh yeah, I reckon there is a flywheel in there. I think that's meant to have a cover over that kind of thing. But actually, I think they did break though on these Hondas and then fall out. But yeah, that's that's where the um, engine number's located if you're interested in what you've got. I think they are all B20A6s in this series of Prelude. Uh, so now I've got the um, thermostat apart. So it's basically just this cover here where the top hose goes in remove that and I gave that a bit of a clean up on this inner surface and also where the hose was on it because it had a bit of corroded sort of muck off the hose and the thermostat itself just pulls out I already loosened this it was a bit stiff but and it seems that just this black plastic bit around the outside is the only gasket there um, so the new one comes with a thermostat the metal bit and also this rubber seal so this one was leaking slightly so I think this old rubber seal has gone it's as hard as it'll probably break if I try and bend it but uh, that seems to have been the problem with that one so I just cleaned up also as well as the the face on the housing um, clean the hole there I don't think the autofocus is working too well at the moment but um, yeah clean all around this inside bit here where the rubber sat I actually ended up using a bit of um, uh, steel wool. Um, just make sure you remove any of that afterwards. But um, that actually scrapes this stuff off, and same with the inner surface of this. Just make sure you remove all the old muck off there and get it back to nice clean metal. And like I say, this bit where the hose goes on, worth cleaning that up as well. Often has a bit of corrosion and some sort of layer of stuff on there. So I'll get that back in there and get the housing back on it, and that should hopefully stop that bit leaking and then I've got to look at some of these there's some small hoses under right under this bit under the distributor and one of those is definitely gone and the others aren't looking the best so I've been meaning to get around to doing those but I thought I'd wait until I did the actual radiator and replaced all the coolant um, so um, yeah, I'll get those out next. I think I might have to pull the distributor off. If, if memory serves me correct, I think the distributor's actually got a couple of little bits in there that locate it, so you don't have to do the timing again necessarily. Though I think when you undo the bolts, there might be a little bit of play there, so 
got to decide whether to pull that out or not but I may have to redo the timing slightly uh, if I do pull that off um, but I'll have a look at that in a minute but I'm fairly sure that might have to come out to make room to get to these other hoses and this gasket on, is on both sides of this this rubber bit on the that's the old thermostat so you notice there's rubber on this face and rubber on that face obviously this is just bare metal each side so this actual new gasket bit actually splits so you're gonna have to fit start fitting that round there is a bit of a well, this little I'm not sure what this little little loose bit here is but um, you can see there's a like a cut out in the top there which mounts where where that little pin thing is so as long as we get that the same obviously that's the other way around with the other one with a spring on the inside so you'll yeah, we'll just have to get this over and it's actually split so the metal fits in between the two layers of rubber on this so that's a little fiddly job I've just got to do and then that should just poke in the hole and the, and the cover goes straight back on and that should hopefully seal it all up now this gasket actually goes a certain way around too you want the, the flat bit, flatter bit of it on the front on the outside and this bit on the inside it's got a two little locating lugs there which go towards the top there's a couple of cutouts in the actual housing and just a matter of locating those in there if you try and put it in somewhere else it won't necessarily go in that's the spot so that pin thing pointing upwards roughly and just press that home and then yeah we'll just bolt the housing back over the top and that should do the job Okay, now I've got the um, distributor off, so the distributor's just sitting there. I just unplugged the lead to the high voltage coil. I've left the rest of them plugged in. Uh, it does have some locating pins on that, so if I don't fiddle with them, it should be roughly back where it needs to go. This was leaking a little bit of oil, and you know, I found one of the bolts was a bit loose, so that might have been why that was happening. It's basically a seal around the shaft here. Where is it there? No, yeah, it's in this silver bit at the back, there's a rubber O-ring there. I think I did actually change that before, but that might have been on the other car I had. And then down below that, we have these hoses. And you can see one's got cable ties around it, because that's the one that packed it in on me. And um, I basically just cable tied it off for now. I think it just all these hoses are just for heating up the engine in cool temperatures, cool climates or something like that. They go to various parts of the engine, not part of the main cooling system, though the heater hose is down in there. And the other heater hose comes across to this other bit I've got disconnected here, with the, you can see the green there. But um, yeah, these other little hoses going in this little T-piece. That's what's causing the problem. I noticed they've been looking a little bit crappy, so I think I might pull all those out and replace them. I do have a few second hand ones around here that I'll do for now but I might get down to Repco or somewhere see if I can buy a length of that type hose usually they can sell it by the meter uh, just call on hose of the same diameter and you just cut off the length you need because I really would like to replace all this with brand new stuff there's another piece going across there somewhere which doesn't look the best it's in an another little T section there so given the age of the car it's going on 30 years and just done 300,000 k so I think it might be time to change all these little hoses preferably with brand new stuff and just chuck all them out clean up all the fittings and make sure everything there is fine so we don't have any risk of it failing again um, always the further away you go from home the more likely it is to fail but I managed to get this home cable tied it up and actually raided a mountain stream right near where the intake for the Cascade Brewery is and just topped it up with enough water to go home on the back roads and it was a pretty cool day so it wasn't too bad she had lost a bit again by the time I got home but the needle stayed in the normal sort of range all the way home as long as the car's going with air blowing on it uh, should keep it reasonably cool but it did a little bit of steam came out when I finally got home and stopped it but not as bad as it was when that hose was leaking it was gushing out everywhere so I'll pull those hoses off and it re at least replace a couple of them for now with second hand ones and then yeah if it's not that big a job to remove the distributor like that and um although you have to get the air all that air intake stuff out of the way but again that's only a couple of bolts and then there's this bracket thing you've got to unclip it from 
and it just put the rest of it just pulls out from memory um, when I got that out I want to put a new air filter in anyway so it's a bit easier to access like this so I might do that at the same time and then give it an oil change and she should be as good as new hopefully okay I got this little hose assembly out and yeah nice little split in the bottom of that one so that's gonna come out but there is a split right about there you can see what I've choked off the worst of it with some cable ties can only just get my hands in there and these are a bit, a bit hard to get out they're probably not that bad condition these other two but I think I'll replace them anyway once I take the other end off this um, little T piece here you'll probably see what condition they're in and um, yeah but I think it's they're old enough now it's probably time to replace the whole lot of it with some new ones I'll take take these out and put a couple of second air ones in for now and then I might take the old ones down to Repco and see if I can get some new stuff and then just replace a lot with new stuff at least should be good for another 10 or 20 years that way and won't have to worry about them blowing again